Hey everybody, I got a question for you today as Linux users. Have you ever went to a website of a distribution and it's just this completely beautiful website and you're like, man, this is an awesome website. I bet this distribution is great. And you download it and you load it up and run it in a live environment or you put it on a virtual machine and you're like, wow, the website was 100% better than the distribution. Well, the reason I say that is I'm going to zip on over to this website real quick, which is xlite.exton.net. I'll be sure to include that in the description below. And it is the xlite Linux distribution. Now, this is a great lightweight distribution. If you've got newer hardware, this thing is going to literally fly. And if you've got older hardware, it makes using that older hardware completely awesome. I know I use some weird words when I describe distributions, but I mean this wholeheartedly. I've run this in a virtual machine, and this is the lightest Linux distribution I've ever run. And at the same time, it is probably the most functional lightweight Linux distribution I've ever run. Now, this is the newest release. And if we come down here, it basically says the new version of XLite is based on Debian SID, which is the unstable developmental branch of Debian. And it's build 20726, and it's a total rebuild of XLite. The ISO file size is about 2 gigabytes, which means if you want to run this completely in RAM, you're going to need about 3 gigabytes of RAM to do that. Otherwise, you can run it off a live USB, no problem, or open it up in a virtual machine, no problem. Now, this is their website. It's nothing fancy, not a bunch of flashing things and saying, hey, use our distribution. It's a great distribution. It's just a very straightforward website that has a lot of good information about the distribution in it. And it's got archives over here. XLite's been around for quite a while. Uh, I want to say we're going on six or seven years don't quote me on that, but I know it has been around for a while. And you do have about download, USB install, uh, extend Android systems, and how to multi-boot it. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm not going to waste a lot of time here on the website. Uh, but if you're interested, like I said, I'll put that link in the description below. That way you can zip on over and take a look at it or download it for yourself. Especially if you have older hardware and you want a beautiful operating system that is very functional at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zip on over to the desktop. Now, if you download it, throw it on a USB or open it into a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're met with. Now, right off the bat, one of the things I noticed is it's really small. It's hard for me being as old as I am and having to wear glasses to be able to read what's on the screen, especially up here. Or when you go down here and you want to open anything up down here, it is kind of small. Now, this might work for you, but if you're somebody like me, that definitely has issues with sight. You may want to go ahead and fix this. We're going to go to settings. You've got composite. Let's look at all screen. Let's go to look and we will go to scaling. Now, this is what it looks like. It comes at a scale of one out of the box. I don't want to bump it up too big. I think I will go to 1.2, which should be big enough. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And it's going to come back and say your display driver does not support OpenGL. That's because I'm in a virtual machine, so I'm not going to worry about that. But what you will notice is everything gets a little bit bigger and it's easier to see. You got more of a readable text. Now, like I said, some of you all might like the little text. With me, I've got to have it just a hair bigger so I can see it. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to come down here to a terminal and I want to show you this. And I'm going to go ahead and run a top. And let's go ahead and maximize that so it's easier. And let's make that a little bigger for everybody. And as you can see right here, it shows memory. I have a whopping two gigabytes issued to this system. Right now at rest with just the terminal open, I'm hovering around 400 megabytes being used. That is really light. I have had some XFCEs that run 450, 460. And I've seen this one right here. A uh, while ago when I was doing some tasks in it before I started the video, it was hovering around 330. So this is really light. If you want to use it on older hardware, that older hardware is just going to jump back to life. But it's just not going to be able to run this operating system. It's going to be able to do tasks that need to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. 
it comes out of the box with this background. I think it only comes with four. Let's go down here and take a peek real quick. Settings, wallpaper, let's pick that. And you do have four wallpapers. You got the one right there. You got the sun plane. Let's go ahead and apply that, which is a pretty wallpaper. And then you've got another one that kind of gives you that cool over the ocean wallpaper. And then you've got the sun space wallpaper. Go ahead and make it a little darker so it's not as bright, which is, I like that. Now, one other thing I do like is with the open windows, if you've got a window that you're working on, but you don't want to completely close it, you do got the shade effect where you just double click on it. It turns into a shade and you can move it over to the side of the screen and then continue doing whatever you want to do. Now, if you come down here and you open something up like the file manager, and this is PC man file manager, I do believe. Let me go ahead and look at that. Yes, it is PC man FM 1.3.2. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's zip back on over to their website real quick because I want to double check what kernel this is running on. And let's come down here. It is Debian SID, Unstable Developmental. And it is running on the kernel 5.18.0-2-AMD64. So that's pretty up to date. I know we're on 6.1 now, I do believe, or 6.0. So it's got a newer kernel. And let's go ahead and close out of that. And like I said, if you wanted to keep this file manager open too and out of the way, you could just slide it over there and keep doing what you wanted to do. And when you wanted to bring it back up, just double click on it. Now, this is a very lightweight file manager. You've got home folder, desktop applications. That's it. That's all you've got over here. Now, if you wanted to add like a video folder, that's real simple. You just come over here, create a folder. Let's call it videos. Click OK. And you've got your video folder right there. So like I said, it's a very lightweight file manager, but it stays out of your way and pretty much lets you get things done. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you look up here, you've got some of your main folders right here. If you click on that, it's going to open up your Exton home folder, which is boot, EFI, ISO Linux, and live, which is what we have mounted right now. And then you do have your home listed right here. And then your root. And then your temporary files. So you have access really quickly with your folders right up here. Like I said, if that's something you like, you can keep it there. If you don't want that there, obviously you can go into settings and change that. Now, if you come down to the bottom, you do have one panel down here. You've got power. You've got what keyboard you're using, which is I'm using US. And then you've got your Bluetooth with different adapters and things that you can set up here. Then you've got your Ethernet or wired connection because I am in a virtual machine. It's converting my wireless on my laptop into a wired in the virtual machine. Then your sound, time, battery level. And then over here, you've got Synaptic Package Manager, which is the way you get your software. Let's go ahead and open that up. And like I've said in previous videos, Synaptic is a type search install type application. So saying that, you've got sections, status, origin, custom filters, search results, architecture, and then back up to the top. But this is where you would come over, do your searches for software that you wanted to install. Once you do your search and it pops up over here, what you would do is you would just click on it like here. We would click on it, mark for installation, and it would show you if there were any other dependencies that were required for that. But it says here the following packages have unresolvable dependencies. And you'll run into this, especially if you're running in a live environment. A lot of the times what you're going to have to do is actually install the operating system, let Synaptic update everything, and then be able to go in and do your searches. And then you would be able to install software. So let's close out of that. And that is how you get software on Xlite Linux. So let's go ahead and close out of Synaptic. And then you come down here. You've got your refract a snapshot if you want to take a snapshot of your system. And it gives you a couple different options here. You can create a snapshot with UEFI enabled. Resquash and make ISO, no copy. Remake EFI files and ISO. Rerun XORISO only. Set up snapshot or exit. So that's definitely a way you can make a quick snapshot of your system. Let's close out of that. Now, if you want to install Xlite Linux, it uses the Calimares installer. Welcome to Xlite Linux, GNU Linux 2022.07 Exton build installer. And you've got 
your standard things over here. Welcome, location, keyboard, partitions, users, summary, install, and finish. It's a really nice installer. I've enjoyed using it with the many arch distributions that I use. Calamares did go through a time about 18 months ago where it would have a bug here and there, but it seems like they've worked most of those bugs out and it's a pretty solid installer. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Yes. And then you come down here, you got Firefox. You've got your file manager, which we already saw. It comes with GIMP out of the box. Let's see how long it takes GIMP to load up. And that's a pretty quick initial start. Anybody that's ever used GIMP before knows that your first start in Linux usually takes a little bit because it's got to collect all your fonts and all the information it needs to run. So that opens up and moves rather quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of GIMP. Then you've got another terminal. You've got terminology. And then you've got your four different desktops right here. Now, if we come over to the app menu, you've got your favorite applications, which is Advanced Network, File Manager, which is your PC Man File Manager, Install, LX Terminal, Applications, you've got Accessories, Programming, Graphics, which has got your Screen Grab, Image Viewer, and GIMP, Internet, FileZilla, Firefox, Sound and Video, Alsa Mixer GUI, eMixer, MPV Media Player, Pulse Audio Control, we already saw, SM Player, and then your System Tools, Enlightenment File Manager, which is different from PC Man. Let's all go ahead and open that up. And there's your Enlightenment File Manager if you wanted to use it. You've got Desktop, Home, Root, Temp, and of course your Exton ISO that I am running the virtual machine from. So let's go back down here to Applications, System Tools, Gparted, LX Terminal, NM Tray, Refract Installer, Terminology, and then Navigate. You've got Home. This is your file manager access from right here. You can get in there real quick from right here on your app menu. Run everything, take a quick screenshot. We've got desktop, you got your four virtual desktops. Shelves, if you wanna add a shelf, that's what these are called, shelves. You can add a shelf, delete a shelf, change gadgets, show and hide all windows. Enlightenment, about, about theme, restart, exit, settings. You've got composite, gadgets, modules, palette, screen setup shelves theme wallpaper and then you've got all which brings over to look apps screen input windows menus language settings dialogues extensions files preferences and then of course your system but guys that's a quick look at x Lite linux it's very lightweight it's easy to maneuver and get around in I do believe if you've got some older hardware out there, I mean, dual core stuff that's, you know, 10, 12 years old, you put this on there, it's going to bring new life to something that you might have sitting in the corner that you're not using. And if you decide to put it on a newer piece of hardware, it's going to literally fly. The Enlightenment desktop, Debian SID, you really can't go wrong. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you're already running or is this something you might download and take for a test drive? Drop that in the comments below. Do me a big favor before you leave today. Please like this video. More likes I get on videos keeps me in YouTube's algorithm. And if you found something interesting in this video, I'm sure somebody else out there might as well. Also, please subscribe to the channel. doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member on YouTube, which is a lot easier now. I've dropped the eBuzz Central membership down to 99 cents, and we're adding perks as we go. We're getting rid of everything in the middle. We're just going to have two levels now. So you'll be able to get a lot of info and a lot of perks at, for just 99 cents a month. You could also zip over and buy us a coffee, go to PayPal, throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.